Welcome to The Kelly Roach Show, a place for no fluff, easy to implement, 20 minute or less business and leadership lessons to help you build a sustainable business that scales. Let's get started. Welcome back to The Kelly Roach Show. I'm super excited to have one of our first guests of 2023 here with me today, Damon West. And he is going to teach you all how to be a coffee bean. And if you don't know what that means, we're going to walk you through the story so that it has meaning for your life and helps you to elevate your vision, your goals, your dreams, and how you're going to get there. So, Damon, welcome to the show. Kelly, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thanks for spending your time with me. You said one of your first shows. I mean, this is like early. Did you already do a show in 2023? Well, this is my first guest. You are my first guest of 2020. Oh, good. Let's say you're my first guest of 2020. I thought I got here first. Okay. You are my my first guest. You are my first guest of 2023. You stole the spotlight. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. No, I'm excited to talk. So look, I mean, the coffee bean message, you know, it's, it's been catching on. One of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten was from John Gordon. John Gordon is my best friend. He's my co-author. He's my mentor in life. And, and he and I wrote a book a few years ago called The Coffee Bean. And, and I'll tell the story in a little bit about how John and I met. And you've got to see it through. He said, so many times in life, people will give up on their message because they think, well, this thing hasn't taken off yet. Three, four years, five years into it. And they change their whole strategy. They change their message. And then they get to start back from scratch at that message. He said, but if you will stick with this be a coffee bean message, he said, one day it's going to take off and you will be known as the coffee bean. And that's going to be a big, very big deal at some point. Damon. He said Starbucks didn't open a, its second rest, its second store until like 11 years into this whole thing. And in 11 years, it took them to get to their second store. And now you can't throw a rock without hitting a Starbucks. He said, so you got to stick with your message. Whatever your brand is, stick with it. Don't give up on it. Stay with it. If you believe in it, make it happen. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten. That was in 2019. Let me take you back to 2009, May 18th, 2009, uh, 14 years ago. I'm standing in front of a jury in Dallas, and the jury in this trial, they just listened to six days of overwhelming evidence of my guilt of the crime of engaging in organized criminal activity. I was the ringleader of a bunch of other meth addicts breaking into people's houses in the uptown neighborhood of Dallas. In fact, they called these burglaries the uptown burglaries, and they called me the uptown burglar. I was the leader of the whole group. I was a meth addict, just like the rest of them. And these burglaries that took place for three years, none of them were violent. No, no one was ever going to ever home. No one got hurt. Nobody was uh, physically uh, harmed in these cases. But these burglaries went on for three years, and um, there was a lot of them. And at the end of the six-day trial, the jury had heard enough. They heard the story of Damon West, about a guy that, that had it all and threw it all the way around drugs. You know, I went from working... And, and Congress worked for a guy running for president, being a Wall Street stock stockbroker for UBS, uh, college quarterback, D- Division One college quarterback, and then there I was in front of them, the ring leader of a bunch of other thieves. And the jury went to deliberate that day for ten minutes on my punishment. Ten minutes, Kelly. That's no that's no time at all. The jury had their mind made up, and that day they sentenced me to life in prison. Sixty five years in Texas is a life sentence. Mm-hmm. And right after the trial, I've got about two months before the, the prison comes to pick me up in Dallas County Jail. I have a chance encounter with this other inmate, this other inmate that I call Mr. Jackson. And Mr. Jackson shares with me the story of the coffee bean. He told me to imagine prison as a pot of warm water. And he said, anything we put to the pot of warm water is going to be changed by the heat and the pressure inside that pot. And he said, I'm going to put three things in the pot of warm water and watch how they change. A carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean. And so he walks me through it. The carrot in the pot of warm water becomes softened by the water, becomes weak. It happens to people in life. They can be down by life. He said the egg in the same pot of warm water, the soft liquid inside becomes hardened. Your heart becomes hardened. He said when you become the egg, you become incapable of giving or receiving love. You don't want to be the carrot. You don't want to be the egg. But he told me the coffee bean in the same pot of warm water changes the pot of warm water into a pot of coffee. He said it's the only thing that can change the water. Everything else is changed by the water. The coffee bean can change the water because the power is inside the coffee bean. And he said, when the water gets the hottest, the coffee bean unleashes what's inside of them and changes the pot of warm water into a pot of coffee. He said, the coffee bean is the change agent. And that's how you will come back out of prison, a better version of you. And Kelly, it's stuck. I mean, like anybody from five to 95 years old could understand this concept of a coffee bean. 
And that's what I did, Kelly. Prison was a baptism by fire. It was the most brutal and violent thing I've ever been through in my life. Two months of constant fighting when I first got there. But he also told me, he said, you don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. And this was a tremendous breakthrough for me. And I have used it to today in this life. You don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. I mean, some days you're going to win and some days you're going to yeah. lose. And, and it's okay yeah. to lose because everybody loses in life. Just get back up and keep fighting. And so that's what I did. I kept getting knocked down. I kept getting back up. And eventually I've earned my place to exist inside this prison. And then I start working on myself and becoming that coffee bean in that pot of boiling water called prison. And it's not easy to do. I mean, Kelly, the, that's the power of the whole story. Because if I could do it in there, then you could do it out here. Because the pot of warm water that I was in is like people's biggest fear. People tell me all the time their biggest fear is to go to prison. Mm -hmm. This is a very hard environment. But I was able to change that pot of warm water into a pot of coffee because I did consistent things every day. Things like getting up every day and using positive body language in my life. Uh, getting up every day and working on myself spiritually, mentally, and physically. Getting up every day and becoming a servant leader in a place you know, the world needs more people to be servant leaders. Yes. Getting up every day and giving up control of the things that are going around me, things I have no control over either. The only focusing on things I do control, what I think, what I say, what I feel, and what I do. And lastly, I'd get up every day and I'd make sure to remind myself that your past does not define you, Damon. Your past wins, your past losses. It's like the windshield in the rearview yeah. mirror, you know? The yeah. windshield's bigger for a reason. You need more space to look forward than you to look back. You can't drive your car looking out the rearview mirror. If you, if you do that, you get into wrecks. You hit everything on the road in front of you because you're not watching the road in front of you. So I quit living in the past. I started living in the present, living in the moment. There I'm able to see things that are happening every day, obstacles and opportunities. And after seven years and three months in a maximum security prison, Kelly, the parole board came to visit me and they wanted to know, can you do out in the free world what you've done inside this world in one of our toughest prisons in Texas? Can you change that to a pot of coffee too? November 16th, 2015, 14, what, seven years ago now, I walked out of a Texas prison, not necessarily free because I'm, I'm on parole until the year 2073, Kelly. I'm on parole the rest of my life. But ever since I walked out of that prison, I was a coffee bean, you know, the, it's the same coffee bean that I was inside there. And I've taken it out here and the message has started to spread, Kelly. It, it's, it's gone on because it's the same thing that I felt when I first heard it from Mr. Jackson that day in Dallas County Jail back in 2009, that we have the choice every day to choose what kind of life we want to have, the carrot, the egg, or the coffee. Yeah, that is absolutely incredible. And there's so much there. I, I don't even know where to start. What I think is so important about what you said uh, at its root is that you talked about how it's from the inside out. And I think we live in a world where everyone puts so much stock in what is happening out there that they can't necessarily control versus putting that stock in themselves and focusing on looking inside of themselves for what they're becoming and what they're capable of and how they're contributing to the world in a meaningful way based on looking within, right? And I love how you said it wasn't just, you know, the work that you had to do on yourself in order to do this transformation for yourself. And now you're leading right. others through the transformation. But even going back to the coffee bean, like it, it comes from within, right? It comes from within. And it's such a good message at the beginning of the year, because I think, you know, again, I think those scales get tipped a lot where there's a lot of stock being put in things out here that you can't control and not enough stock being put on looking within and turning within and realizing that you have everything inside of you to do, create, be, have, experience anything that you want to. And what a blessing, first conversation of the year, first guest to be sharing this message with everyone. Can you go back though for a second? Um, you were talking, before you even got into the story, you were talking a little bit about sharing your message and sharing that message over time, right? And the yeah. years of sharing that message. And how so many people, they don't get that instant response to the message. So they keep changing the message. We talk about that on the show a lot. So when you think about what you did to finally get the coffee bean to start hitting critical mass, right? Which it is now, like it's, it's becoming a global phenomenon now. Talk to me a little bit about that journey of sticking with that message over a period of years and finally getting that snowball to start rolling. Yes, Kelly. 
great question and great story about this. And this is something that for entrepreneurs, for, for business people, for people that are in sales, whatever it is that you've got to get up every day and perform because that's your whole life depends on that. This is your story. And, and I'm an entrepreneur, Kelly, and, and I didn't ever set out in life to be an entrepreneur. My, my, my mother, my father, I have wonderful parents. And, and the way I was raised is that you're going to go to college and you're going to get a degree and you're going to work for someone else and yeah. you're going to work there for 40 or 50 years, you're going to retire, you're going to get a gold watch, you know, yeah. which was yeah. the plan that I was on, the path that I was on. Everything you saw before I went to prison, I was working for someone else and building their dreams after I got that college degree. But once I got out of prison and I had a felony on my back, I became an entrepreneur out of necessity because right. now a lot of jobs, a lot of avenues yes. were closed off to me and I have hopes and goals and dreams. But you know what I also have? I know that inside me, I have the power to build anything I want to build because I got myself out of that prison with that mindset. So here's this story. So whenever I was in prison, I got a letter from my favorite teacher, Mr. Jelly, my seventh grade history teacher. And he wrote me in 2011. He said, Damon, when you get out of prison one day, you should consider sharing your story with young people. He said, I think you could bring them hope. And he said those four words in that letter that every human being needs to hear from another human being. He said, I believe in you. Yeah. I believe. In you. So I went to sleep that night in my bunk and I slept with that letter. In fact, I slept many nights holding on that letter because it had those four words. And, and I started thinking to myself when I was in prison, if I were going to share my story one day, what would it look like? And I've got to start living that story yes. now. I got to start building yes. that story today. And so the person that walked out of prison on November 16, 2015, like I said, I was already that coffee bean. I'd already started building this new life already when I was in prison. So when I step out, I'm ready to go. The problem is I don't have anywhere to go speak. You know, I just got out of a prison, man. Yeah. And I'm on parole for the rest of my life. I can't just, nobody let me come in schools. One way. I can't just go up to a school and say, I just right. got out of a joint. I want to talk to your right. kids. Right. Don't right. Back up. No, but I was like, okay. If that's closed off to me, I'll find another way. I went and found a judge that was local in the area where I live, and I found a law enforcement officer, and I gave them my pitch. Hey, I've got this story, and I know it's powerful, and if you'll believe in me, if you'll trust me, if you'll take me in there, we can serve other people and help other people. Growth follows belief, Kelly. Yeah. You have to believe in yourself before other people will buy into you and believe in you, too. That was the first stage of me seeing it. So these, these two men would take me into school. It was very sporadic at first. It was hardly anywhere for me to speak, but I knew that I wanted to get better at my craft and I've never spoken before. So that meant I had to get in my reps. And if I'm not going to be speaking somewhere, I've got to get in my reps at home. Then There was a yeah. mirror in my parents' spare bedroom. I lived with my parents for the first two years I was out of prison in their spare bedroom. And I went in front of that mirror every single day, Kelly, for two years and practiced my presence. If I wasn't speaking somewhere, which is very rare in those first two years, I was speaking in front of that mirror every day. I didn't miss a day. Two years into it. No, it was uh, January 12th, 2017. I've been out of prison for about 14 months at this point. Um, a buddy of mine invites me to this award show in Houston called the Bear Bryant Coach of the Year Award. They're going to name the best college football coach in America. And he knows that I want to share my story with college football programs, but I don't have any access to college football coaches, Kelly. Yeah. And I played Division I college quarterback back in the 90s. No one knows who yeah. I am. But I went to this show that night. And I've got an hour and a half drive from Beaumont to Houston. And I practice this elevator pitch that I've been working on. And I get to, this, you get to the award show. And he sneaks me in the back door. And I hit the ground running. And all the best coaches there. USC, Wisconsin, Penn State, yeah. they're all there. And I get to go up and I meet all these coaches. And I shake their hands. And I give them this pitch that is terrible, Kelly. And every coach I meet that night slams the door in my face. They're all telling me no. In fact, in one hour, seven of the eight coaches have told me no. Seven no's in one hour is a no every eight minutes, Kelly. I've done the math on it. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. I'm in the corner of the Toyota Center. I'm licking my wounds. I'm feeling sorry for myself. And the voice in my head is telling me, go home. It's over. It was a dream too big. Yeah. Quit now. You beat the traffic home. Yeah. But you know what I quit doing a long time ago, Kelly? Listening to myself. And don't listen to yourself. Your voice in your head will tell you a crazy thing. I talk to myself. And I'm telling myself that night, you're not going anywhere. You survived prison. You got perspective. You know what a bad day looks like. This isn't one of those. This yeah. guy's going to tell you no to your face, and then you can go home. Yeah. Well, I stalked Dabo Sweeney around that room. That night. And I was like a nut, Kelly. I mean, I'm hiding behind fake plants. I'm hiding behind people. Security <clears throat> watching me. I think I'm going to get ejected. But I finally get, on, I get, I get in front of Dabo. And, and I mean, everybody wants Dabo's time. He just won the national championship two nights before. 
And I'm giving Dabo this pitch, man. I'm talking for like a minute, like 90 miles an hour. And Dabo's like, dude, do you have a card on you or something? And so I gave him my card. He snatches out of my hand and he says, I'll check you out. And he takes off running. I mean, he can't get away from me fast. It's a no. But I felt okay about that last no, Kelly, because I left it all in the field. And that's yeah. what we learn when we're younger in life. And we live by when we're kids. Yeah. You know, it's okay to fall down. And stuff. Or as Jackson told me, you don't have to win all your fights, but you have to fight all your fights. I fought all my fights and I lost. I went 0 for 8 that night. But I went home and slept like a baby because I left it all in the field. Yeah. Four months later, I'm at work. I work at a law firm at the time in Beaumont. I get an email from the director of football operations at Clemson University, a guy named Mike Dooley. And Mike Dooley's email said, hey, Damon, Coach Swinney met you at a award show in Houston, and he'd love to have you come talk to the team. Do you have August 1st open? Dude, Mike Dooley, I've got every first open. Dude, I got nothing going on in my life this time. So, man, August 1st, 2017, about two years after I walked out of a prison, I'm standing in front of the national champions of college football, and I give a presentation that night. And at the end of that presentation, Dabo is in my face. Dabo is telling me, he's like, Damon, I've never heard a story like that before. He said, I'm going to steal the coffee bean message from you, man. He said, I'm taking it, man. He said, I love that message. He said, have you been to Alabama yet? And I'm like, no, Dabo. I've been to Clemson, dude. I haven't been anywhere. Yeah. He said, well, I just text Nick Saban. Let's see what happens. The next day, I get a call from Alabama, the director of football operations there. We'll see you in Tuscaloosa in three weeks. Then it's Kirby Smart. Then it's Lincoln Riley. It's every coach in America is calling me. Because now Dabo Sweeney believes in me. Bro, mm -hmm. follows belief. This yeah. person believes in me because I believed in myself. But the real magic in my life happened, Kelly, one year after my presentation comes in. It was August of 2018. I was at work at that law firm, which I don't work at the law firm. Anymore. I'm an entrepreneur now. I remember. Yeah. I work for myself. But I get a call. It changed my life. On the other end of my phone is John Gordon. John Gordon, the massive motivational speaker and author. The guy sold... You know, millions of books. He's got 26 books out there. He's on my phone. He's the energy bus guy. And I'm like, dude, I follow. I'm like, John, I follow you on Twitter. I know who you are. How do you know who I am? He said, Dabo Sweeney. He said, I just got done talking to the Clemson football team. Dabo brings me in the office to tell me your story. He said, Damon, the culture at Clemson is one of the best cultures I've ever seen. Take it for any sports team, corporation, whatever. I've spoken to them all. Clemson has the best culture I've ever seen. You've changed the culture there. One of the team mottos is be a coffee bean. They've got t-shirts at Clemson, Kelly, that say be a coffee bean with the Paul Pernod. That's amazing. He said, Damon, the world needs the coffee bean message. Let's deliver it to the world. Will you write a book with me? We'll call it the coffee bean. In the summer of 2019, 10 years after Mr. Jackson shared with me the coffee bean story in a jail cell in Dallas County, the book, the coffee bean came out. And it became a worldwide bestseller. It's got a global publishing contract attached to it. It's in every language of the world. Chinese, Spanish, Arabic, French, Italian. Every language of the world has a copy of the coffee bean. But it all goes back to that one night, January 12th, 2017, at that award show in Houston, when I refused to go home after those seven no's. Yeah. When a lot of other people would have folded up and said, you know what, that's enough for me. But I, I refuse to quit, Kelly. I refuse to give up on my dreams. And you should refuse to give up on yours, too. Don't ever quit before the miracle happens in life. Because you never know where that big yes is going to be. So you just always got to keep asking. Because the only question you know the answer to is the one you don't ask. That's always going to be a no. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, that that it's unbelievably powerful. And I, I just, I go back to in in the highest pursuits and the most meaningful things that you're ever going to do in your life, you cannot be seeking external validation from someone to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And I just love that you have this message because it has to come from within. And I think that it's so interesting because Whenever someone comes out of nowhere and something becomes this global phenomenon like the coffee bean and the story and the book, and I know you have the new book coming out, which we're going to talk about in just one second here, um, you know, people think, oh, this person came out of nowhere. I mean, they just hit the scene. They have no idea. They have no idea the thousands of practice sessions talking to yourself in your parents' spare bedroom in front of the mirror, right? And that's same with all of us, right? I always say every overnight success is 15 years in the making. There's 14 years and 364 days that no one knows who the heck you are. Yeah. And, 
14 years and 365th day, everyone's like, oh, where did this person come from, right? They're amazing success. They're so lucky. They just hit the scene. They're, they're doing these unbelievable things. And you're like, you have no idea what led up to this. So I, I, I love the story. I can see why it's a global phenomenon. It's such a good message for today about the power that can only come from within, the power that all of us possess that none of us exercise to the fullest. And it really opens up what's possible. So this next book in the series that's coming out on February 1st, um, talk to me a little bit about the the new book. This is the last book in the series, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, last uh, book. the first book was The Coffee Bean, which came out in 2019. During the pandemic, John and I wrote a book for kids called The Coffee Bean for Kids. Um, and this last book is How to Be a Coffee Bean. Because when I give my presentations, I go all over the world speaking about the coffee bean. I talk about the things we talked about a while ago, the five ways that I became a coffee. I go into detail about it, about having positive body language, being a servant leader. But this book is called the, the How to Be a Coffee Bean, the 111 Principles to Becoming the Best Version of You, right? So in this book, we take more than just the five. We go 106 more deeper into it. Just tell people about the power that's inside them that you already have. Like you just said, you already have it, but you don't use it to the fullest. So we're trying to tap into that vein. We're trying to say, hey, look, here's 111 different principles that you have inside you that you may not even know you have, but this is what it really means to be a coffee bean. And and it goes deeper than the original coffee bean book goes about how John and I met and how this all got started in the first place. Because, I mean, people need to see examples that, like you said, of of someone that could turn it around. And I love that you talked about the overnight success because... This book is going to hit on that that too, because there's no such thing as an overnight success. No, it's it's a myth. It doesn't really happen. It's not real. Like you said, 14 years and 364 yeah. days in the making, that 15, you know, and 15 years later, yeah. wow, here they are. Um, but yeah, that's what this book, this book is going to be a lot about that. It's the stuff you're talking about right there. It's 111 principles on that right there. Yeah, that is incredible. So can we pre-order the book now? Where do we go Absolutely. to get it? Let's connect with you on social. Let's spread this message of the coffee bean everywhere we can. So give us the details on on what we can do next. Yeah, anywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, anywhere books are sold. I mean, it's it's a major publishing that's going down. Uh, But yeah, it's available for pre-order right now. um, And it comes out February 1st. And and yeah, I mean, it's anywhere books are sold. And if you need to find me, it's at damonwest.org. And um, my social social media contacts are at Damon West 7 for Instagram and Twitter. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing your story with the world and believing in yourself enough. Uh, I think the the turnaround that you have gone through and, and, and experience is so key because I think one of the things that holds people back the most is our past failures. We carry the burden and we we start to see ourselves as a lesser than version uh, that doesn't match up with what we want to create and who we want to become. And I think the story and how you've been so vulnerable and willing to share, you were at the highest high, you went to the lowest low, and then we're able to turn it all around into this movement. And so thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story with the world and giving that example to people that their past feelings uh, say nothing about what they're capable of in the future. I think that's such an important part of your message. And I'm really excited to see you continue to do this work, share it with the world and, and to support the launch coming up. Oh, uh, Kelly, thank you so much. And thank you for giving me your deal to let me use your platform to help tell the story and, and spread the message because it's people like you that have believed in me that have gotten us where it is. I mean, I, I didn't pop out of this thing with an agent or anything like that. It's just, you know, when we go into life with the mindset of how can we best serve other people, all of the other stuff takes care of itself. And I tell the entrepreneurs all the time, you know, if your purpose is to serve, the other stuff takes care of itself. Social media platform, find ways to serve your audience. The other stuff takes care of itself. And that's the thing. We have to just believe in that internally. And that's already inside you. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Well, thank you for coming on the show today. For everybody that is either watching or listening, we're going to put the links in the show notes so that you can order the book, check out everything that Damon is doing. Damon, keep it going. We're all rooting for you. And thanks for the great work you're doing. Awesome, Kelly. Thanks a lot. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.